Hello friends, today we will discuss about hearing screening guidelines in newborn babies. So in this we will see what is the normal hearing process, what are the different types of hearing loss, what are the different tests to detect the hearing loss in newborn babies, what is the recommendation of newborn hearing screening and how to do hearing screening, how to do follow up of these babies and what are the gradings of hearing loss in newborn babies. So coming to what is the normal hearing process. So sound waves, sound waves are collected by the pinna and then will enter to the outer ear canal then will transfer to the tympanic membrane. Sound waves will hit the tympanic membrane and vibrations will be generated in the tympanic membrane. These vibrations are transfers in middle ear and these vibrations are amplified by the ossicles. In the middle ear ossicles, they will be transferred by the ossicles and amplified the vibrations and that vibrations will enter the cochlear fluid in the cochlea. In the cochlea two hair cells are there, inner hair cells and outer hair cells. So outer hair cells will produce the echo, sound echoes will produce by outer hair cells that is called autoacoustic emissions. And inner hair cells, these mechanical energy will be converted to the electric energy. So this electrical energy will be transferred by the 8th cranial nerve, cochlear branch of the 8th cranial nerve. And this electrical energy, electrical impulse will reach to the auditory cortex, brainstem auditory cortex and in auditory cortex that sound is perceived. So this is the full cycle of the how hearing process completes. So here if we see this is the part of the so outer ear, this is the outer ear up to the tympanic membrane, after tympanic membrane this is the middle ear. So this is the outer ear, this is the middle ear and after this cochlea, this part is cochlea, inner hair cells or these are inner ear parts. Now we will see that if any problem happens in this full cycle, where is the pathology that depends on what, which type of hearing loss will happen. So if problem happens in outer ear and middle ear, means problem is happening in conduction of the sound waves. So that will cause the conductive hearing loss. So if problem is in middle or outer ear, that will cause the conductive hear loss. If problem is happening outer ear, you know, tympanic membrane, or ossicles, middle ear, so that will cause conductive hearing loss. But if problem is happening in inner ear, like cochlea, inner hair cells, outer hair cells, or eighth cranial nerve up to the auditory cortex, that will cause that will cause sensory neural hearing loss. So this is causing sensory neural hearing loss okay one third type of hearing loss also is there that is called the neural hearing loss or auditory neuropathy in that what happens that outer ear cells are normal outer ear cells are normal in auditory neuropathy but problem is happening in inner hair cells or eighth cranial nerve or auditory cortex that is called so three types of hearing loss are there conductive hearing loss sensory neural hearing loss and neural hearing loss so types of hearing loss, three types of hearing loss we have discussed, conductive hearing loss, sensory neural and neural. So in conductive hearing loss, there is problem in the conduction of the sound waves, means problem is in outer or middle ear. In sensory neural hearing loss, there is the pathology in the cochlea or outer ear cells or inner ear cells or in eighth cranial nerve that cause sensory neural hearing loss. In neural or auditory neuropathy, there is the problem in the either inner ear cells or eighth cranial nerve. but outer ear cells are intact here, outer ear cells are intact in neural or auditory neuropathy. Now coming to the what are the different types of hearing tests to detect the hearing loss and when to apply which test. So three types mainly three types of hearing tests are there in newborn. First is OAE, auto acoustic emission. Second is automated ABR, automated auditory brainstorm response. Then diagnostic ABR, diagnostic auditory brainstem response. Two types of ABR is there. One is OAE. So in first is OAE. In OAE what will do? So in OAE one microphone will be there that is inserted in the ear canal. Sound stimulus are given and 
echoes are produced by the outer hear cells so this oe detects the echoes sound echoes that is produced by the outer hear cells in oe so here it is detected echoes by outer hear cells and this is we use in low risk babies for screening hearing screening in healthy newborn babies low risk babies we can use oe OE can detect both conductive and sensory neural hearing loss can be detected by the OE. Next is ABR, auditory brainstem response. So in ABR, what we are doing, we are detecting the electrophysiological activity by the cochlea auditory nerve, brainstem auditory cortex by the surface electrodes on the skull. Okay. So here we are detecting this. So this ABR are two types. One is automated ABR, that is the screening test only. So this automated ABR we are doing for screening only for high risk babies. So high risk, what are the babies? any babies admitted for NI? So more than five days, that also is high risk baby. Any preterm baby, birth asphyxia babies, any neonatal hyperbilirubinia. So any high risk baby we should do for screening automated ABR. For low risk babies, screening OAV. Okay. So here we are doing high risk babies screening. So ABR can detect the conductive hearing loss, sensory neural hearing loss and neural hearing loss also can be detected by the ABR. This OE cannot detect the neural hearing loss or auditory neuropathy because here in auditory neuropathy outer hear cells are normal. In auditory neuropathy outer hear cells are normal and this OE are detecting only the echoes produced by the outer hear hearing hear, outer hear cells so in auditory neuropathy OA will be normal but ABR will be abnormal so for all babies high risk babies screening we should do automated ABR only not OA so in ABR we are giving the sound stimulus and the electrophysiological activity will be detected by the surface electrodes on the scalp and the predetermined algorithm will give pass or fail result if it is normal pass or if it is abnormal then fail based on the presence or absence of the fifth wave so in a wave, different types of waves are there if fifth wave is present then it will give pass or if fifth wave is absent then it will give fail or refer now coming to the next diagnostic abr so diagnostic abr we are using only for diagnosis if any baby fails to the screening test so next that baby will go for diagnostic test in diagnostic test we will do diagnostic ABR and what is the difference between automated ABR and diagnostic ABR this year we are using for screening this we are using after that diagnostic test and this gives only pass or fail but diagnostic ABR gives the type of hearing loss and the degree of hearing loss also so here different decibel sounds we are giving and on the basis of that that will give the what is the degree of hearing loss now coming to what is the recommendation of for hearing risk screening in newborn babies so we should follow the 136 principle for hearing risk screening in newborn babies 136 means one means by one month of age babies hearing screening should be done a screening test should be done by one month of age and how we'll do that by OAE or AABR, automated ABR. If baby is low risk, then we can do OAE. If baby is high risk, then we can do automated ABR for screening test. For three by three months of age, baby's diagnostic test should be done. If this screening test fails, then by three months of age, diagnosis should be done. Diagnostic evaluation should be done for that baby. And that will do by the diagnostic ABR. Okay. This is the by three months of age. Then six by six months of age, if baby's diagnosis done, baby is having hearing loss. By after that diagnostic evaluation, for that baby before six months of age, intervention should be done. What intervention we can do? We can put hearing aids for that baby, or we can do cochlear implant for that baby. So by six months, this intervention should be done because that is very important for that baby for speech and language de development. If we delay this intervention, sometimes if we diagnose at one year or two years is that baby's speech and language development will be hampered. 
now we'll, in this flow chart we'll see how to do hearing screening which test should apply and when to apply and how to do follow up of these babies so first we have to categorize if baby is low risk baby or baby is high risk baby if baby is mother side baby is healthy newborn baby in that baby we can do oe for screening test if oe is passed nothing to be done if for that baby oe is failed or referred then we have to do repeat screening for that baby repeat screening should do by oe or we can do automated abr for that baby either of one we can do for this low risk baby repeat screening test if after repeat test is passed then nothing to be done if still it is referred two times screening test is failed then that baby will go for diagnostic abr okay before three months of age we should do diagnostic abr this is for low risk babies if baby is high risk baby means baby was admit, admitted in an icu baby was sick baby was admitted for more than five days that is the high risk baby in high risk babies for screening always do automated abr not oa so automated abr we should do in high risk babies for screening hearing and if automated abr is passed then nothing to be done if it is failed or refer then we should do repeat screening for these babies automated abr only if you after repeat it is passed then nothing to be done if it asks after repeat still it is referred or failed then this baby will go for diagnostic abr so difference is this only that here we can do oe low risk babies but in high risk babies we should do automated abr for screening also many people are confused between the oe and abr many people think that oe is for screening abr for diagnosis but it's not that OE is for screening for low, low risk babies and ABR are two types automated ABR and diagnostic ABR automated ABR we sh should do for screening of high risk babies and diagnostic ABR we should do for diagnosis of babies who are failed twice in screening test now coming to the grading of hearing loss so diagnostic ABR will give the grading also what is the grade of hearing loss so if baby is hearing up to the 25 of decibel means there is no hearing loss if it is between 26 to 40 decibel then mild hearing loss 41 to 60 decibel moderate hearing loss 61 to 80 decibel is severe hearing loss if it is more than babies cannot hear there is no response on 80 decibel also that is the profound hearing loss so that was about the hearing assessment or hearing screening in newborn babies. I tried to clear all the doubts about hearing and if still you have any doubt, you can message me. Thank you so much.